Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to do another day on implicit differentiation and get some more practice. This uh, is definitely fair game to be a free response question on your AP test. And so I want to work one that, that would be similar to that. So I've got this curve over here that is defined by this implicit function, and you can see, or this implicit equation, you can see that this is not a function, so we couldn't write this y equals as a function of x. Yeah, see this little graph fails the vertical line test pretty miserably. So let's uh, find dy dx, and yesterday I was following things up with this notation dy dx to represent the derivative y with respect with respect to x. Today I'm going to use the notation y prime so that you can see both of them. So instead of multiplying by dy dx, I'm going to multiply by y prime, but they mean the same thing. You'll see both those notations from me in your book and everywhere else. So off we go. The and x is our independent variable. This is very important that you look down here. This tells us that x is an independent variable. So dy dx is going to equal 3y squared times dy dx, but I'm going to use y prime as my notation for that. Then plus 2y times y prime minus 5 times y prime minus 2x is equal to 0. So there's your derivative, but now we have to solve it for dy dx, or I'm going to solve this for y prime. So I'll factor a y prime out of these first three terms, and I'll move this 2x to the other side, so let's see how that looks. I'll have y prime times 3y squared plus 2y minus 5, and that's going to equal 2x. So if we divide through, we're going to get that y prime is equal to 2x over 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. And I'm going to go ahead and do this and give a shout out to Jenny because she just walked in. Hi, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, anyway. So let me pause this real quick to give some instructions, and I'll be right back. Stay right there. I promise I'll be right back. We're multitasking here. I, anyway, I'm back, so I hope you waited on me. All right, so there's dy dx. Now we're going to do two more things. We're going to write the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the point 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3 looks like it. that definitely is on the curve, so we want to write the equation of the tangent line right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our equation, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. We know what x1 and y1 are, they're right here, but we don't know the slope, or, or, or do we? Well, hold, look, hold on, look at this. This is a way of finding this slope. Um, so my m is going to be using this point I can find y prime. So my slope, which is y prime, is going to equal 2 times the x-coordinate, so that's 2 times 1, so I'm using this point here, all over 3 times the y-coordinate squared, so that's 3 times negative 3 squared, plus 2 times negative 3 minus 5. And I told you yesterday, sometimes when we use y prime, we're going to have to have the x and the y-coordinate to throw it in to find the slope. Now, I did this earlier, and I'm pretty sure I got 1 eighth, but I'm going to check it again. It's going to be 2 over negative 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, minus 6 minus 5, which is 2 over 16, which is definitely 1 eighth. So my equation is going to be y plus 3 equals 1 eighth times x minus 1. That would be the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point 1, negative 3. So... I can believe the slope of 1 eighth as well, because that's, that's, rather, that's rather flat. It's almost zero. All right, the, the last one is find the coordinates of the points on the curve where the line tangent to the curve is vertical. If you have the line tangent to the curve, this means the derivative. And for a derivative, you need to interpret that as slope. And how can you have a slope to be vertical? What is the slope of, of an undefined? I'm sorry, I just answered the question. But what's the slope of a vertical line? That is a does not exist or undefined slope. How can slope be undefined? Well, here's my slope right here. How can a fraction be undefined? Is it okay to have zero on the top? Well, of course it is. But where is it not okay to have zero? We can't have zero on the bottom. So we want to find places where we get zero on the bottom and not zero on the top. So I'll write there. I'll write this. We want the bottom equal to zero but we want the top to not equal zero. If that's the case, I'll have an undefined slope, which means I'll have a vertical uh, tangent line. Now let's look at the graph and get an estimate. I think right here would be a vertical tangent line. 
I think right here, I think I could maybe even say that's 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. There's a vertical tangent line here. There's a vertical, there are four vertical tangent lines to this graph. Let's see if we can go find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the bottom equal to 0 and verify it does not make the top equal to 0. And so I have 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 equals 0. So I've got to bust out the factoring skills. So that's going to be 3y and y. <coughs> Excuse me. And I did this earlier, and I worked this out to be plus 5 for this factor and minus 1 for this factor, set it equal to 0. And so I get y equals 1, and I get y equals negative 5 thirds. Now, the first solution is going to be rather easy. The second one, I used my calculator. y equals 1. This says points. This does not, find, does not say find the y values. It says points. So I know that y equals 1 is one of the points. How do I find the other points? How do I find the x? Do I use the derivative? No. Where do I find points on the curve? All points on the curve come from this equation right here. Every point on the curve comes from the original um, implicit equation. So I found that y equals 1, so I'm going to plug 1 in for all these y's. 1 cubed is 1, plus 1 squared is 1, minus 5, minus x squared equals negative 4. And so that's 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And so I'll add 4 to this side, bring the x squared over there, and I got 1 equals x squared. And the square root of both sides, you get x equals plus or minus 1. x squared equals 1 in two places. And so I was, I was correct with my first, my first guess. 1 comma 1 is a vertical tangent line, and also at negative 1 comma 1. I think it's important for me to say again that we got the points. These come from the original equation. All points come from the original equation. So I had two values. I had 1 comma 1, and I also had negative 1 comma 1. Now I have to admit something to you. When I plugged in negative 5 thirds up there, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. I, uh, I gave up and went to my calculator. When I plugged in negative 5 thirds for the y, you get this equation. You get negative 5 thirds cubed plus negative 5 thirds squared. I'm going to scoot down here. Minus 5 times negative 5 thirds minus x squared equals negative 4. And you would have to threaten me with some kind of violence to uh, make me solve that algebraically by hand. Uh, so I went to the TI-89 and I hit F2 and I went to solve. <laughs> I went solve that equals negative 4 comma x and my TI-89 gave me the following values for x which were pretty weird but I did check them. Square root of 849 over 9 comma negative 5 thirds was one place and then my other one was also negative square root of 849 over 9 comma negative 5 thirds. And whenever I uh, asked my calculator for this decimal, it was about 3.23 and negative 3.23. So I went and verified by the curve. Do I believe that if I went out 3.23 and down to an, um, a third? Yeah, I do believe that that's where that happens. So I got those from the calculator. And so that means that whenever you do a question like this, that you're probably, if, if the numbers work out like that, it's probably going to be a calculator question. So anyway, you'll be practicing a worksheet. Um, tomorrow and I will see you guys then.